This is all true. I dated a girl with BP, bipolar. I mm -hmm. dated a girl with BPD, borderline personality disorder. I dated a girl with BBB, which is... <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Well, some relationships just end because, you know, the, the one of them is bipolar, and they're not taking the meds. <laughs> that's been my... That's been one, my one of us is basically. sociopathic. And... Like, I'm now dating my third bipolar. Third. Right. And they don't tell you until the fifth date, and you're like, son of a bitch. <laughs> you know, you're like, but I take my medicine, great. I'm off my med. You said you take your medicine. Yeah, but I was on my medicine when I said that. Now I'm not. I'm like, great. <laughs> right. And they say they're like a man in uniform. But I worked at Taco Bell for two years. And nobody was fucking me. <laughs> that, was a, that was a nice uniform. Yo, what's up, Square Pin Brigade? On this episode, uh, we have uh, our good friend, friend of the show, Brian Scalara. And here we, are, we discuss why relationships fall apart. Dealing with both bipolar women and dating a narcissist. Um, really interesting show. Brian's a really, really funny dude. Um, I, I had a lot of fun. This episode flew by. So yeah, he, he's, he is. He is really hilarious. Uh, Brian is a good dude. And if you love the show, by the way, we also continue doing the show over at Patreon. That's where we do our bonus content. So if you want to support the show and you want more relationship advice, go over to Patreon.com/slash/Manschool202. That's where we do all the bonus coverage. And also, if you want consultations, click on, uh, go to DanteNero.com and click on consult for Dante. Or you can email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, Square Pin Brigade? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Now, I have said that 600 times before, but this time I mean it um, <laughs> because we got a special guest. First and foremost, I got to say what's up to my partner in crime and co-host. Mm. What up, Harry? What's popping? Oh, man, I'm just living the greatest life you could live. <laughs> you know, one day at a time, one moment at a time. Although I'm having a tough time keeping these alligators down, Dante. It is difficult. It is. It is. It is. I, I want to get into um to my guest today, and uh, this is this is a, a a guy who I consider a good friend. I don't hang out with him nearly as much as I should. I don't talk to him as much as I should. But I've said this on the show. Friend of the show. He's been on the show before. And uh, uh, this guy, one of the few guys. So hey. let, let me let me let me back up. As a comic, you see everything, and you're and you. It's sort of like being a magician, and you know the tricks. Um. So after a while, even people that we think are very funny don't make us laugh because we've seen it all. This guy is one of the guys who make me laugh. No, he, I would, I, I, he's, he's my Allen Iverson of comedy. And I'll, I'll tell I'll tell you why, because you know that when Allen Iverson was at his best, you knew he was going to cross you over and there was nothing you could do with it, do about it. It's, you knew what he was going to do. Even when you know what he's going to do, you, you, there's, he's still, he's still getting the basket on you. Because he's he's such a funny dude. Um, really, really, really funny dude. He's also Thank got you. a new special out on Dry Bar. Check that out. You'll see what I'm saying. Um, yeah. funny funny dude. Give it up for Brian Scalari, yo. Give it up for Brian. <laughs> Thank you, Dante. Right back at you. I, um, me and you no longer play the same club, so I never see you. Yeah, I, yeah. Every time I came to town, I'd play stand in New York, but they don't use me anymore. I don't know why. And, yeah. and so I never see you. I never you're, you're never down at the cellar, so I never bump into you. Well, they don't they don't play me down there. So. Yeah, yeah, it's very it's very odd. It's like what happens, you know, like a new Booker takes over, and you're like, okay, I guess uh, he doesn't like me. Yeah, yeah. people people think I'm angry when I'm not. So people think what I've been realizing is, like, I'll call a comedy club and be like, how come you haven't used me in two years? And they go, well, you were rude to my wife, and I go. Is it possible your wife just thought I was mad when I wasn't? <laughs> like, yeah, I, I'm like, I'm a New Yorker. I'm fat. It takes a lot of work to make the cheeks go up. <laughs> you know what I mean? It makes it's a lot of work to like fake a smile. Brian, so would you? They would think you say, I'm mad when I'm not. 
Would you say you have a resting bitch face? That's the thing. That no, you I would say. just say that I have fat cheeks that are difficult. It's actual work to smile. Yeah. Plus, when you're 49, uh, there's a lot less stuff to be smiling about. You know what I mean? Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. It, we also here's something else we also have in common. We I don't even know. I don't even know if people realize that. I mean, I think they just. But I have the the furrowed brow. Like yeah, I, I, the, tri- the triangle um, said this. Look, Harry, I said that, and Harry never even recognized. He, yeah, he never it. even realized it. Like, look at now. Harry's smooth ass forehead. Yeah, but, 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 but look at ha- look at Harry's facial shape and body shape. In fifteen years, he's going to be as miserable as us. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid it. I'm trying it's to avoid ha- it. Oh, it's going to happen. And I, if, if only I wouldn't be dead, so I could enjoy it. Oh my goodness, Brian! <laughs> so you're not angry? Is that a not? I'm not angry. No, that, that was that was comedy. That was comedy. <laughs> that was one of those I don't even, I don't, I don't even know well enough to hate you. I was just. I know. Yeah. I know. I love seeing Brian. I saw Brian Friday. I got to work with Brian. Uh, I think this Friday. Where were we? Broadway. Oh, I like I like, I like to keep that quiet. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but uh, yeah, I like uh, Rich Brooks a lot. You know. Yeah, yeah, he's good. He's been good. It's to amazing me. how um, I remember what I used to like about that club was you could smoke in the back room when it first opened, and now that you cannot now. You so used to be able to. You used to be able to shit in the back room, just yeah. right on the floor, right on and, the desk. And now shit. I gotta walk two flights of stairs. Now you gotta. Now they want you in the bathroom. It's weird. So yeah. it's true, Brian yeah. is a funny dude. I know Dante. He means what he says because we actually talk about Brian quite a bit. Because he makes oh, us thanks. giggle a lot, yeah, yeah. Just the, thanks. just the yeah. Harry's bits. heard this. Harry has heard my speech about. Oh yeah. i like. Here's a here's a uh, kind of a reenactment. Okay. Hey Harry, you know who fucking makes me laugh all the time? Oh, thanks. Brian Scalara. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And I, thank you. It's funny because I think the I think the young comics at Broadway are frightened of me because I don't really want to uh sit there with all the young comics you know mm-hmm. what i mean i just want to go in and go out get my get my hundred dollars and go and, and leave and a lot of them will ask questions and i'll just be honest with them and tell them like i don't know if i should do this i'm like it doesn't matter what it doesn't matter is it you're, you're going to be doing this for 25 years does tonight doesn't matter you know yeah. and they'll take it as like me being grumpy when really it's just i think fantastic advice it, 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 it really doesn't matter like so much doesn't matter um yeah. Yeah, I, and it's it's, cool. it's weird how um you feel like uh, people, you know, when when you're a young comic, you think everything matters, and what you realize is that it, it it what the only thing that matters is an accumulation of what you do. I always say that comedy is kind of like that that um you know when you have that water bottle next to your bed, and every day you take your change out of your out of your pocket yeah. and you dump it, and then one day you buy a fucking. Yeah. Uh, 80 yeah. inch television that you didn't know you had is fucking yeah. a grand in in your bed in, in nickels, dimes, and quarters. So it, it doesn't matter. I am I am kind of feeling like uh you know I say this all the time that things are changing with the internet and stuff like that. And oh yeah. And people people can't really and I'm 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 kind of I look I get it because we grew up at a time where it was like be funny. Yeah and, not, 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 uh, and actually being funny actually hurts you now. You know what I mean? Why would you? Why do you say that? Because well, look at some of the guys that are making it. Making it, they're just personalities. They're not exactly funny. They're just personalities, or they're uh, a certain uh, type, a type that's not uh, represented very well. So it's like some people are aren't funny yet, and they're being rushed through the system because they're a certain type. And then you have other people that have a podcast. Where they don't tell jokes, they're just a personality, and now they're selling out arenas. And you can read the reviews; like he didn't tell one joke, but we liked it, you know. And he had well, these. I'll, new- I'll also. Yeah. It's funny because I ran into two guys last night, and this is one of those guys that has really one of those guys that has a really famous podcast. Who, um, you know, people spent. I think they said they were like one hundred fifty dollars for tickets, and they was like, "Oh, it, was, it stunk," and I go. Um, because you you're expecting something because so now like your podcast yeah. drives your career yeah. because you're constantly putting content up and people are people are 
are seeing you. And so, but what also happens is if you're not funny, you um you have nothing to market in a way. Yeah. Um, I talk about this this dude on this gay dude on TikTok. Got um, who who basically he dresses up. Uh, Harry, remember Mookie? I do remember Mookie. Mookie's whole act was. I got a. There's another gay. There's another dude called uh, Badass Batty. Uh, that uh, God, I fucking um, just it makes me laugh because it's so absurd. It's a gay dude with a full goatee and a beard, but long, luxurious hair. Wears like stockings and thigh highs and six inch heels and okay. basically jumps like jumps on the high shit like will will has it got crazy ups like a like a 48 inch vertical okay. where he'll jump onto a picnic table from the ground or Jump yeah, it's like that. Garbage. It's like when dudes do that exercise, that training exercise, where they do the vertical yeah, but, leap from a from the ground up onto it, a bunch of pads. He does it with six inch heels, and he runs full sprint. Which it's fucking phenomenal, right? But here's the thing: how do you monetize that? Like nobody's going to a theater to watch you jump on shit. <laughs> like I have no idea. I mean, I, I I've given up trying to understand. What's happened to the business? It's and it's it's all right. This is this is how Buster Keaton felt when sound came in. You know what I mean? It's like, all right, this is what's happening. I don't understand it. I'm just gonna keep doing what I do, and the audience stops coming. They stop coming. Here's the, the interesting too. I've, I just I just went to uh, I just went to YouTube College, right? Okay. So there's a. a there's an inter like an, a YouTube uni- like what they call YouTube University. Right. It's an online course just so that you can um you can understand. I don't and I want because this is a relationship podcast, so I don't want to go too far in, but um uh I think it's I I and I can say this to you because you understand how it is to be funny. So my point is like you you have a concept, right? Right. And you 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 figure out where the setup is and the, and the punch, and then you edit the joke down. So when you're talking about these young comics who are asking you questions, right? right. Whatever, like you've learned through time to edit down in the joke so that the joke is so solid. Not only is it solid, but it, it wastes. Yeah. There's no wasted time. Like it's very lean, and yeah. that. Yeah. So the the internet content is the same way. You're you because because you're asking people for their attention. If you use the same principles that you would use to writing a joke, it just it. I mean, like I went went to this college and it just made so much sense to me because, like, if you're doing a, a six minute video and then the video, like, you can literally look at the. It's the even greatest thing. You can look at the analytics and see where the people stop listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and you uh, can go yeah. go back to the video and go, oh, I, I see where I was just rambling yeah. on, which well, is... To me, to me, there's two things. It's, uh, for example, my friends and I from college, we're talking mm-hmm. 1995. Right. We, uh, we did over 200 skits, and they're all on YouTube. Right. Now, the first 100 were done before YouTube on VHS. Right. So you could have a slow beginning. One skit, yeah. one yeah. skit a guy comes in, I, I, he goes, pizza? And I go, I don't, I ordered pizza four days ago. And the mm-hmm. guy pulls, pulls a pizza out of his shirt, throws it on the floor, and I go, I believe I ordered a sausage, and he takes sausage out of his foot, mm-hmm. and the sausage comes out of his pant leg, and then uh, he goes, 750, and then I shit change. I go, <laughs> and I shit, I shit all this change. Now, people, when we put that on YouTube, people never made it to the shitting change part. Right, right, right. But what I learned was uh, if you're posting something on YouTube, you have to do something immediately funny within the first right. five minutes. When I see a video that says, wait for it, guess what I do? I don't wait for it. You don't wait for it. I waited for it like twice. And, yeah, it's a shark. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. I'm glad I waited for it. It's a right, fucking right. shark. What are the chances? 
Every fucking video is a shark or there's a crocodile. A guy, there's a guy on uh, his TikTok channel is all just, uh, I do spoiler alerts. Or he does spoilers so you don't have to sit through the whole thing. Like, So he'll start yeah, really, a video. Really, and, like, really. and he goes, uh, it turns out that the wife was leaving him and uh, she cheated on him and then she's leaving. <laughs> then he goes, and it's, it's like all the 10 seconds like yeah. to start the video. Uh, it turns out the baby uh, the baby was actually riding a dog. Yeah, the baby was a shark. Yeah. It was a baby, baby, baby crocodile. Baby was a shark. <laughs> yeah, and as for jokes, I agree with you. Well, what I always tell young comics is, it's a block, it's a sculpture, and you're chiseling it down to the bare essentials. You're making a sculpture. Oh, that's a good. That's a really you're taking, good. You're uh, taking them up a block of marble and you're making a sculpture. Yeah. Right, right. But then again, this is why, this is why I'm living in a small room with <laughs> pajama bottoms on and uh, smoking cigarette butts that are very smoked last week. It's just <laughs> the rules. Are, the rules have changed now, you know. I mean, but the, I, the, I think what we're saying is that the rules didn't change. The rules have just applied to a different medium, and and so there's a, something that I say all the time uh, that true wisdom is the understanding of underlying concepts, how they relate to situations that seem irrelevant but really are not. So the principles, the same principles. That you talk about this, you know, a joke being the the um this block of granite that you chisel down to this little artwork. I mean, if you if your internet content is the same way, which not only that, but I mean, I think it getting back to what you know when we talk about relationships. I mean, people go, I don't understand women. I don't understand this. Why does the relationship go? It's if they use the same principle that we used in writing jokes, then um, I think relationships would last a lot longer and they would be a lot more, a, a lot more viable. Um, for instance, um, like, uh, let me just talk about how it, it, you know, how it relates. So um, what happens, you know, when a relationship, when a, when a, when a relationship goes bad, it goes bad because people lose interest, right? And go ahead, because I don't want to go ahead. Say what you're gonna say. Nah, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. I guess you know, it lose it, a bunch of things gonna happen. You know, but it's it, usually because people lose interest or because they they they're not enjoying it. It's just, and so and and it's funny because I'm I just thought a bit about this while we were talking, so I'm still kind of working it out in my head. But um, something that Vinnie Brand Vinny Brand owns the Stress Factory. You know, he he got divorced and he remarried and he's like really enjoying this new marriage. And he came on the podcast and he taught. He said. He said to me, you got to you got to date your wife. He says the reason why he, he why his marriage went to shit and why things didn't work out was because he 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 he, he didn't date his wife. And so his new wife, he dates her. He he looks his best and he puts the energy in it. So, I mean, think about it in terms of a joke. I mean, first thing, what makes a great joke is, is truth. You know, when we're honest about we're on, I mean, you may not be, there's an exaggeration or whatever, but we're honest about what our feelings are. I mean, it, it, the jokes come from a level of honesty. Secondly, we don't tell the joke. Like, like remember when the whole alternative comedy scene came and then people were, People, I mean, and Harry, this is Harry's, uh, his observation. He used to say it's interesting how, um, you know, the alt, alt scene was, I'm not going to try to be funny because yeah. if I try to be funny and I fail, then it, it looks like I, like I it, failed. It's worse. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, go, what they say what to, you said. See, what they tried to do, a lot of alternative comedy was going very slow and quiet because the less energy you put out, it doesn't hurt as much when you bomb. So there's yeah. no worse feeling than putting a lot of energy into something and then doing a little like, yeah, and then nobody laughs. And That's there's the no worst laughs. feeling. But it's less, it's, but this way you could just act like you weren't even telling, I wasn't even telling a joke. I was just making a statement. I was just right, saying right. something. Yeah, it's cheap. And you, you guys didn't get it, but, mm, and they do this kind of, uh, yeah. it's cool, you know, I guess just me, you know, they, they do these things, but the whole point is, and I've, and I've watched, I mean, I, I, I mean, if you, again, 
if if you ever get a chance to watch Brian on stage, he makes me laugh all all the Thank fucking you. time. It's just um, right. but I'm never bored, right? Think of all the things in a great way. I'm never bored. I'm always interested. Um, I always feel like when you deliver the jokes, it's you enjoy you're enjoying yourself. You're not um, you know, it's uh, you don't seem bored of it. You're oh, I'm in, I mean, it's funny because I'm, I'm just acting. I am intensely yeah. bored the entire time. But this is my point. Yeah. We don't feel that. We yeah, don't, that's the idea. The idea is that. Yeah. It's and, um, and then, go ahead. Well, least some relationships just end because you know the, the one of them is bipolar and they're not taking the meds. <laughs> that's been my. That's been one, my one of us is patient. sociopathic. And- like, I'm now dating my third bipolar. Third. Right. And they don't tell you until the fifth date, and you're like, son of a bitch. You know, <laughs> you're like, but I take my medicine. Great. I'm off my med. You said you take your medicine. Yeah, but I was on my medicine when I said that. Now I'm not. I'm like, great. <laughs> right. And then they go, I'm going on I'm going on uh, I'm going on a work trip for a month and a half. I'm like, well, that's that. Mm. I, I, I we just we just started dating, so there's no way you're gonna there's no way you're gonna come back and wanna call me. You're gonna come back and fucking it's uh, listen, I'm women are um, once you um, hit a certain age and a certain weight, and uh, yeah. and like you didn't nail down somebody, you know what I mean? Like you are, you're kind of like you you you've, you've succumbed to just dating for the rest of your life. And that's where I am. I'm just going out on dates again, and it's mm-hmm. I really hate it because they what they say it's like like. I'm working on this new joke where they go, women say they like a sense of humor. And I go, no, they don't. They like a tall, good looking man with a big dick who's, who's got a lot of money and maybe has a sense of humor. Because I have a sense of humor and there's not one woman in this fucking room thinking about fucking me right now, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I can't wait. I love saying it because it's true. You know, it's, uh, and they say they're like a man in uniform. But I worked at Taco Bell for two years and nobody was fucking me. <laughs> that, was a, that was a nice uniform. So it's just like, just. Just fucking say the truth. <laughs> and I don't understand why they like tall guys. Like, oh, we feel safe. We feel safe. Really? You know, guns exist now. This isn't like <laughs> the jungle. I could shoot. Your tall boyfriend can get run over by a short, fat comic. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, you, you, With a license think, plate think. that says B. Scalero on the back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, it's, uh, uh, yeah, I know. I didn't know this was a relationship podcast until you sent me the introduction mm. a half hour ago. Okay. Yeah, mine are, I mean, you you know you've been on it. I know, yeah, but I've dated a lot. Of, I <laughs> as a you did do the podcast one as as a, as a, as a, <laughs> as a single forty nine year old male. Right. I have probably dated more girls than good looking guys did in my high school because good looking guys dated like three or four and then they got married. So I probably have had more girlfriends than some of the good-looking guys I went to high school with. They, they probably had like maybe four. Yeah, but, I mean, right. Brian, you've been, I've seen you with oh, a no, plenty no, of I'm bangers. Not, I'm just saying that I have a lot of knowledge for a fat, weird, poor weirdo. You know what I mean? But I, I think the reason is that I, I think that you, yeah, you know, and this is, this is, this has kind of been my, uh, my position in the comedy community is the like i'm always the the relationship guy when something goes left i'm always i'm usually the first call and what i would say is a lot of times um we we uh like it's amazing to me how you will talk about almost short fat weird guy and i've always seen you with hotties i've always seen you I have a funny story that you uh, reminds me. I a long time ago I had a date, a first date, and she's she's a, was a wannabe comic. And um Are we talking about Mara? <laughs> no, no. No, I haven't seen her in years. How's she doing? I, we I she hung up the phone on me one time. Uh like we were having a discussion and she hung up the phone on me. And I had her removed from the from the website, the podcast, the passwords, and I haven't spoke to her since. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So good. Things are good. Things are really good. And one of the reasons why that one of the reasons why that is because I don't 
I, I just don't tolerate any risk, any disrespect from anybody. I, I mean, I don't, I never knew her very well. I, can't, can I never you hear knew. Me? Yeah. Yeah. We can hear you. I, uh, I, never, okay. I never, I never knew her very well. well she seemed, no, seemed nobody, nice to me, but I didn't really know. Nobody her. knows the real Mara Mary. Nobody. I don't, 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 don't want to bad mouth anybody, especially if I don't know him. You know? Yeah. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. I'm, I, don't, I'm, I do. I know. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm not, I'm not involved, Mara. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you can wash I'm, your hands am, of it. But anyway, it doesn't matter. My point is, uh, well, it doesn't matter. She's not here. She's not with yeah, us. Yeah, I don't have any anymore. problem with with any. Hold on one second. What's Give me a second, on? Harry. Can you well, hold? Pause it. Yeah, I'll pause, pause it for a second. second. I'm just telling some fucking stories. Hold Harry, on a second. Hold on one second. I'm at my I'm at my full. Okay. I'm at my Phil of Maniacs. Phil of Maniacs. Yeah. Uh, all right, we're back recording. Uh, we had a yeah, um, issue there. But, but it's a, there's a uh, there's a situation where um, you know you you're in a, a situation where people are people are not you, you know. Oh, this is what I find out too. Sometimes when you when you're dealing with somebody who is emotional about uh, they're not they're not coming from a logical perspective. Oh, right? Right. That's all. Um, I, every person I know. Every woman. So this is something that I've been thinking about. Like if you had a if you had a crazy uncle in a sanitarium, right? And you go visit him and he's got one of those those foam cowboy hats that they wear at the at good, for, good, and, good for him. Good for him. And and, <laughs> and a trench coat and he's in his boxers and right. he's got one one scuba flipper on, right? And he's wearing yeah. an oven mitt. And he goes, right. Hey, you know, Brian, let me tell you something. You know what you need to do with your life? You listen. But you, but it goes in yeah. one ear, and you go, you go, because this guy is wearing one scuba flipper yeah. and a trench coat. Yeah. The problem is when you're dealing with a woman and you're attracted to her, and you, uh, and you also want to, you want her to be a, a a dick cozy, right? You you <laughs> you're in a situation where all of a sudden there's this assumption. Of sanity, at least on a on a on a basic level that you're expecting, which doesn't necessarily is not necessarily the case. Like you're saying, if you you've dealt with people who are bipolar, a lot. I, I, I've dated a lot. I've dated. I have a joke. This is all true. I dated a girl with BP bipolar. I mm-hmm. dated a girl with BPD borderline personality disorder. I dated a girl with BBB, which is <laughs> <laughs> a clean. It's a clean joke. That's my only clean joke. But I've dated a lot of women who had problems. I dated a girl who was molested by her father when she was three. Three. Hold on, hold on. Can you? Because I'm, I'm laughing. <laughs> and, you're not, and you're talking about somebody. Getting molested. Oh, yeah. anyway, I don't wanna... You don't want to be. You don't want it to look like you're laughing about the yeah, molestation. I to... <laughs> Jesus. It was a, I loved. Oh, God. Hold on, hold on. I, I loved every. I, I gotta do like I gotta do like uh what like the old impressionist and they go all right well, I, okay I'm, I've loved every ex girlfriend I've had and um, a lot of them were raped and uh, oh. they are mad they'll get mad at you because of the rapist in their past and it's like you try to be uh, to understand them and to be there for them and um. And you take a lot of the abuse that they that the uh, that they built around themselves, this filter they built around themselves, right. to deal with the reality of what they can and can't handle. And so I've been very understand. I used to work with mentally handicapped people mm. for fifteen years, so I'm actually a very patient person. And uh, I'll give people when somebody says they're sorry, that goes a long way for me. I will give them chance after chance if they say they're sorry. Then there comes a time where you just got to block. And it breaks my heart every time that I have to block somebody or they block me because it's like, I really tried so hard to understand. Mm -hmm. Like when Dave Chappelle says, don't call a woman crazy, understand what got them that way, where they are. I literally try to do that. Mm -hmm. And and when they, and when they keep keep, keep coming on the attack, it's like, you have to take care of yourself and walk away. And it breaks my heart every time because I've loved every ex-girlfriend I've ever had. I've loved them mm-hmm. and still do. And I remember them fondly, you know, and they'll change things around in their head and make, yeah. and make you the bad guy and then tell other people that you're the bad guy 
And you just want to be like, really? I fucking held you while you were crying for four months mm-hmm. straight, and I'm the bad guy. Okay. Yeah. You know, and it, it breaks my heart, that is all. You know, so I don't know how to be funny in this type of uh, podcast. You don't. You don't no, you, to, I mean, you, you, you just you, talk. Was yeah. fucking no, you, funny yeah. you fulfill the funny quota. Yeah. We'll but be thinking uh, about that for a while. Sad. You had me, you had me giggling all into your molestation. And I, <laughs> I, I, see, my thing is, I'll. What women hate about me is that I'll, I'll yell back. They don't want a guy who yells back. They want a guy who just sit there and get yelled at. My thing is, if I'm going to sit here and get yelled at, can I at least jerk off? Because yeah. I love what a woman, I love what a woman yells. So can I at least jerk off while you're yelling at me? Then I'll be sure to stay. You know, Brian, you just got to put that in the Tinder profile, and you know, you're going to get less get, replies, but the ones you get, you swipe left on me in person. I don't need that. Like, no, thank you. I'm a human being. No, thank you. No, this is really happening. No, thank you. Okay. They hate the fat. They hate the fat. They also don't like that I'll win an argument. That they'll, they'll like, yeah, I said this. No, like, actually, I said this because you said this. So they go, fuck. And they'll, like, they'll, they don't want a guy who's smart. Wait, wait, wait. Give me, <laughs> explain that. Give me a. Give I, me I'll give you an example. I, as an actor, I remember dialogue really well. So I'll remember who said what first. Uh-huh. And a lot of, t- uh, one woman in particular, she was a narcissist. And I don't know if you've ever dated a narcissist. Yes. It's impossible. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought there was more. No, either one. It's, <laughs> impo- it's, sorry. it's impossible. You're like, actually, I wrote <laughs> Harry, down. Harry, Harry jumped in on that one really quick. <laughs> well, because the arguments happened so much where she would deny that she said something. But I, after each date, this is crazy that I did this. I would write down what she said and the date. So I'd be like, actually, you said this. And <laughs> no, they don't want that. They don't want that. You'd pull out court transcripts and read it back. Yeah, exactly. Wow, I love it. Well, because I wanted her to see. And I didn't know she was a narcissist. I thought she was just a, a rape victim that was trying to handle what she could and 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 compartmental compartmentalize what she couldn't. And it turns out she's just a narcissist and was uh, gaslighting me. Mm-hmm. And it was it really broke my heart, man. Because I think that of all the women I've ever dated, that was the one I loved the most and wanted the most. And that, mm-hmm. that, that, that was a hard one to lose, but uh, we I finally blocked her, and uh, it's sad. So, so the the Last, narcissism, I'll, the I'll narcissism, the, um, the narcissism is like it's where it's so this self involved. Is that would be would that be a narcissism is like something bad happened to them in their past, usually right. usually in childhood, and they build a filter around themselves. That allows information they can handle and filters out information they can't. Now inside inside this the shell is a mirror where they only see themselves. You don't matter to them. It's just when they want love and affection, they get it from you. And then when they, for example, if they want to if they want to say you're a slob, you're always late, you know, you're always late. They'll wait. They'll, they'll look for the time that you're late. They'll look the for the one time. time. The yeah. one time. And meanwhile, yeah. And then meanwhile, they'll be late. But when I was late, there was traffic, you know? Mm-hmm. So it doesn't, it's not reasonable. They'll change dates. They'll change times. They'll forget what they, they, they won't, they'll, they don't forget what they said, but they'll believe their own lies. And therapists, I know a lot of therapists and social workers, they believe that those people are almost untreatable because it's like a child. And um, but it's, I think that was the saddest. Well, the saddest one. Not that I'm a, not that I'm a extreme pleasure to date either. I'm sure I have things that drive them crazy. But I'm actually a very nice guy, and I will. I I agree. I yeah, agree with that. 100%. I will sacrifice a lot of things about myself uh, to. Uh, Let me ask you this: happen. If you had to say what was, if you had to kind of do this kind of self-reflection what do you think your problem is or where where do you fuck up Um, well well, first of all my weight second of all my money situation ever since the ms uh ever since the multiple sclerosis situation Mm -hmm. i have used all my savings for those Mm -hmm. medical bills and i'm not shy about telling people about that so women like a man to provide for them and i've already shown that another thing that women um i've noticed 
uh, is that I, if I ask out woman A, girl A, I ask out girl A, and she says no. So two years later, I ask out girl B, and girl B says, well, I heard you asked out girl A. Okay, she said no. Am I supposed to stop? So I'm, I'm allowed to ask out one girl, and then I have to stop? If she says mm-hmm. no? If she said yes, I'd be dating her, and I wouldn't ask you out. <laughs> so what else is, is, is this is this because it's oh, man, this I in, wasn't. what is is this in comedy where where no, it's just, it's, it's everywhere. Connect, where are they connected in some way or because oh, yeah, they, yeah sure they, 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 you, you can ask a girl and she winds up knowing another girl you didn't know that but the right, point right. is the point is it's just like if you're not interested why are you stopping other people from dating me right like what? Like it's so. It's like I want other people to know that I found you unattractive. So I'm going to tell other people so that right, when right. You, when you try to find love, right. we're, going to, we're going to stop that shit. Right. You, we want you to go home and jerk off, and that's your place in life. That's uh, kind of shitty, I think, when women do that. I mean, that's a uh, that's a horrible human being. Yeah. yeah. And that's a hor- but that's also a horrible human being. So, so it's it's it's, it's an interesting kind of thing because I'm um I I I'm a really I I, I would say I'm a really good dude. I'm yeah. I'm I'm, I'm yeah. honest. I'm an honest dude. I'm a credible dude. Um and it, what I say if I say I'm gonna do something I do it. If I don't I don't I don't um I will not lie to somebody but when no. I say I'm honest I'm honest like we've been you know we've been talking to Harry and I've been talking to different people about this on the podcast for a while and and it, it, honesty is not just telling the truth with Most the intention the on yeah. with without the intention on on being malicious or to deceive to take something yeah, but yeah. being honest is also being honest when you when uh, when you're lying to somebody not to hurt their feelings, do you know what I mean? So- Listen, I, I, like when I, when I ask out a girl and she says no and tells me the reason is she finds me fat and unattractive, my brain goes, "You could have just lied. You right. could have said I'm Has in love somebody with somebody." Ha- somebody's actually uh, said that to you a lot, a lot. Like just out and out said that. Yeah. Yes, a lot recently. And to me, when uh, somebody I'm not attracted to hits on me, which does they just they just said fat and un- unattractive, yeah, the, or did yeah. they say I'm I, you're not my no no fat, un- fat, un- fat and unattractive? Yeah, but but is that somebody you really want to date? Anyway? No, no, no. Well, obviously not. But at the time, I before they said that, I thought so. But my point is, when somebody I don't find att- attractive hits on me, right? I'll say I'm dating somebody. I'm still in love with somebody else. I'm Spider Man. And I don't want my enemies to hurt my loved ones. Uh, my head fell off. I'm really, a, I'm really a giraffe in a costume. Like I will lie to spare their feelings. And um, so when people, I've had people just tell me that to my face, you know. And one girl was really nice, but her lie was ridiculous. But I believed it. And then when she got engaged, I was like, I thought you. And I was like, oh. And then she got mad. And I, I wait, like, wait, wait, wait! I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I brought it up. The um, it's just uh, I, like listen, some women are great and some women are horrible, just like men. You know, like some men are wonderful and some men are horrible. I tend to not date men, so so far they've been pretty you're, nice. You're, right, your perspective is on women, of course. Yeah, that exactly. makes sense. And, um, that's uh, a funny. I always say we we I always say that you know Harvey Weinstein was a dirtbag, but he but he liked pussy, um because if he didn't if he liked dick, he would have abused as many men as he would have abused exactly, women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um but I I, I think um. God, I, I really hope this is not airing on YouTube. Why why is that? Because YouTube comments are so hurtful. Why do you read them? Why do you let him? Why do you let him post comments? Uh, because that's how you're. That's uh, the whole point of YouTube is. is this would, is something that somebody. This is somebody. I would, not, I would not have. I would not have shared any of these stories if I had known that. Yeah. But oh. I, why don't you just? Why do you look at it? I mean, do you? I mean, do you not understand that these that that these are people who just 
they want to have something to say. And the thing about I, I had I had somebody to uh, Charleston White. This is a guy named Charleston White, big YouTuber, right? Says a lot of controversial shit. But I think what happens is a lot of times, that, and and I and I get it because we're kind of like. I mean, I'm older than you, but we're kind of old school guys. And so what comes out of somebody's mouth, we take it seriously because it comes out of their mouth. And there was always a look you in the eye. And, and I mean, e I think even our relationship is look you in the eye, handshake you and, and to be a man. But YouTube in general is you get paid for the interaction and the, 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 you get paid, YouTube you get paid, for, you get paid for your podcast on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. But you but you you yeah. get paid for interaction. What I'm saying is you get paid if they hate you, you get paid if they love you. And the point is what a lot of people do is they lean into both ends of that. Well, I'm because not, I'm not getting paid for either one. So you could protect me is what you could do. If, if you would like that, we'll I, we'll I would like that. I would like it. Oh. Um no the, the, we'll the sure my point no. is the, no comments for this particular episode. My, the, yeah, I'm smiling. Okay. All right. Cool. Is that is that because you were kidding, or that's because no, no, that's be, that that because I've been taking. I was going to tell you before. I, my dry bar special came out, and my God, are the comments crazy? Like you know, I have a joke about uh, the best time to kill somebody is on New Year's Eve because everybody's screaming at the same time. <laughs> all the all the comments are. Does somebody want to explain those idiot time zones? I'm like, so I'm not saying so that people are all going to so scream at the come on. And I but, but, wait, can and you, there's more. Can there's you, so much more. Can you, can you, Brian, wait, 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 wait. I want it all. I want it all. But Brian, you and this is I mean, uh, this is what's funny is because this is what I say about Brian at all the time. Always makes me laugh. Just and then you and he's hitting me with punchlines. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way. And then a gar. I, I had that garbage truck joke. Now I wrote that joke twenty fucking five wait, years wait, ago. Wait, wait, I, I feel like I'm gonna miss out on the other. Oh no, I, I, I want to bombard. Now the twenty five year old garbage truck joke I did on my dry bar because I don't have a lot of clean jokes, so I threw it on there. You wouldn't believe. I never thought in my life. That people would be offended by a garbage truck joke. What was the what's the joke? It was again? about how it was about how they could, they do a show outside your window at five a.m. and uh, they're like, well, some people got to work that early. It's not our fault. You took a fucking job that works at two in the morning. It's not our <laughs> fault. I'm like, it's a fucking joke about a garbage truck. Stop getting offended. And what, what was wait what? Well, the then there's the fact. They, and that's it. It's, just, it's just like what I point is that they're offended by me saying. <laughs> That, that I don't want to be woken up at 5 a.m. <laughs> They're offended by that. And I I'm, I can't take it anymore. I can't take anymore. And it's like, oh, this fat fuck, they won't, they'll say anything they want to about a guy's weight. Now, if you're depressed, if you're depressed, <laughs> they'll care about you. But if your depression manifests itself in fat, fuck that fat fuck. <laughs> fuck this fat ass, fat, fatty fat fuck, fuck, fuck. It's like, Jesus Christ. And it's also, do they not understand endomorphs? They think it's a self-afflicted disease. The level of fat you get is is your choice. But some <laughs> skeletons are endomorphs, wider skeletons. They put on weight faster. They have to exercise all the time. Endomorphs, ectomorphs. And ectomorphs, and, ectomorphs and, are totally skinny. They don't yeah. care about that. They just want to make their fat jokes. And I'll tell you, man, it gets, it gets to me. So all I'm asking for is a little protection. Because one, you don't want to be the guy. You, you don't want to be at my funeral going, it was my podcast. I put the bullet in his head. <laughs> I, I I can absolutely do that for you. I'm working on this one joke where I'm gonna I that if I die of a heart attack, everyone's gonna say, everyone's gonna say, oh, I didn't see that coming. Fatty had a heart attack. <laughs> but, if, but if I kill myself, everyone's gonna be like, why didn't he just reach out? He was a nice guy. So I'm always gonna carry a gun with me. So when I start to have a heart attack, I'm gonna shoot myself. <laughs> Chris, I'm recording a podcast right now. <laughs> so I'll call you back. He knows. He knows I'm recording a podcast. <sighs> anyway, I'm glad I got the suicide joke in. Every time I tell that joke on stage, looks of shock. So I stopped telling. Him. But the first time I told it in L.A., like they got a standing ovation. Really? 
Every time I tell it now, just shock. Really? So, yeah. So I think oh. they know it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the minute you die, they go, oh, he's such a nice guy. Like, well, why'd you fucking call him fat nine times a day? <laughs> you know what I mean? Can this guy just be, can this guy forget for one day that he's fat? Can he just forget? <laughs> wow. Yeah, but I had a, that, you know, like, well, you know, this goes back to, uh, I was at the comedy cellar village underground and I had a really good spot. It was Tuesday, two in the morning. That's where she puts me and I do very well. And I'm sitting by the exit and the, the probably the most beautiful one I've ever seen walks by me. Now, keep in mind, I've worked with Pam Anderson, Carmen Electra, Selena Gomez, Tiffany Thiessen, Ellen Pompeo. I've worked with some of the most beautiful women who ever existed. This girl, Absolutely. This girl walks towards me and I go, you're exquisite. And she goes, oh, thank you. Next thing I know, I get an Instagram message from her. And we go on a couple of dates. And she's like, I don't want to hear you say you're fat one more time. And I'll tell you, man, what a great date. Just gorgeous, funny, self-made woman. And then she was like, I'm going to go on the road for five weeks. And I'm like, well, that's that. And it was because uh, someone that beautiful can't even can't even get gas for her car without nine people hitting on her. You know what I mean? Right. So sure, sure. two dates and she goes on the road for five weeks. I lost her. But those were two really good dates. I'll never forget. Um, Do you ever think about oh. the fact that that um, some of the beautiful women that you have nailed and been with and spent time there's guys there's guys who are not fat guys who are who are on whatever the 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 thing is that you think this this ideal guy have never had those opportunities i don't i don't understand the question say it again so what what i'm saying is you there's guys who you would perceive them as classically what women yeah, want i like i am I shit on myself, but the, th the truth of the matter is the past five years have been bad. I would say since 2015, I've had a lot of bad luck with women, but before 2015, I had a lot of really good luck. I had, I slept with a woman that most guys will never have a good chance with. I had a very, very good run, a, an amazing run. Uh, like when I pull up the, the file in my head, yeah, yeah, it's incredible what I've been with. I've been very, very lucky. The thing also is when you're a fat New Yorker in L.A., there's five of you there. There's five fat New York Italian New Yorkers in L.A. In New York, there's 80 on this block. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if I fit a niche out there, it's like I don't fit it out here, man. I <laughs> I'm just being I, honest with you in a humorous way, but it's the truth. I, I, yeah, but I don't. I I so disagree with you. I know, but right, you're, wait, but you're not trying to fuck me. No, no, it's it's not. Well, all right, look, let's. Um, I'm not trying we're to gonna do, you. We're gonna do the Patreon, which is like we stop it. And okay. We go behind the Patreon. Well, I had a lot of fun. Let me. Let me. No, I mean you're gonna hang out, right? And yeah, no, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just saying. All right. So for this one, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> Plug your stuff. You bought your dry bar. And my dry bar specials on the dry bar app. Uh, I'll be on the new season of uh, 10 year old Tom on HBO max. I play uncle bill. If you go That's look so at 10 year old Tom on uncle on uh, HBO max first season, I'm the umpire in the first episode. And I'm also uncle bill, which is my great character. A lot of ad living. And I got, a, I got a small part in a movie coming out in February. I was just in night court. <laughs> um, but uh, generally, those are the two things that and I'm shooting a special at Crossroads in Garwood, New Jersey, on June 21st. I would love to come. Can I, I come? I the tickets are for sale, yeah, but I'd love to have you come. Yeah, I would love to come, Brian. I really I would, would. To have you there. Yeah, I could use people there. The last special I did for Helium Comedy Studios, there was 20 people in the crowd, uh. and it's called Never Not Shitting. I call <laughs> it Never Not Shitting because I really feel I'm shitting a lot. <laughs> I shit a lot, and I barely eat. I shit all the time, and then and then I gotta wait my ass for another half hour afterwards. It's like I'm never not shitting, so I called it never not shitting, and it's on uh, it's on YouTube, and it's I, I really like that special. Just get used to the fact that there's no laughter because there's only twenty people in the crowd. But it's uh, did it's you a, uh, do you have a do you have a bidet? I wish I had a bidet. 
listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn you on to something before we go, but listen, I have uh, a, I, I don't a, have any th- I don't have any money. If you want to loan no, me your you, you gotta loan me your bidet. Wait a minute, is there's a there's a portable bidet? It's a portable bidet, has a little water re- life changing, life changing okay. fucking thing, bro. Okay. I mean, I've I've turned dudes on to this, but like I would talk to dudes about this all the time. And guys, I I I get comments in my um in uh, um mem- I get messages and they're like, bro, you fucking changed my life. <laughs> you know? Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do we'll get I'll get your address and I'm gonna mail you one. Uh, I greatest love, thing, I love greatest it. thing okay. ever. Sounds good. What's your um? What's your social media? Anything you want to plug that too? Uh, Brian underscore Scalero, all caps on uh Instagram. That's my. That's the one I'm doing. Putting the most work into. Spell it. Spell it so they can get it. B R I A N underscore Scolaro. S C O L A R O. The way it is. Cool. Thank you, bro. Hold on. Thank but, you. Harry, right. talk to me. Uh, all my social media, follow me at Harry Turjanian and uh, TikTok, <laughs> YouTube. And also, if you want any consultations, you can uh, email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com for relationship consultations. I'm sorry. I'm still laughing about it. <laughs> oh, that's, hey, that's a good joke, right? It's a good joke. Uh, yeah, all my social media, Google me, bitch. You know what it is. Uh, Dante Nero. Instagram, the Dante Nero. If y'all want a consultation with me, hit me at DanteNero.com. Click on, on consult. You can book some time with me. I can we can talk about we can fix whatever's broken. Um, don't forget the Patreon is uh www.patreon.com slash manschool202. Sign up for that. I really appreciate that. And uh check us out on YouTube. Check out my YouTube page, Dante Nero. Yo, um, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? Sexual Revolution is being podcasted. I love y'all. Check us on the Patreon side. We're going to dig in a little bit deeper and because, you know, only special people get to hear that. Yo, love y'all. We are out.